is what the uh, gospel writer Luke records. Uh, but a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? And to keep back part of the price of the land. While it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto me, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether ye sold the land for so much. And she said, Yea, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. Then fell she down straightway at his feet, and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in, and found her dead, and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. You may be, you may be seated. Most precious and holy Father, Lord of all, our wonderful and merciful God. We thank you, Father, for the presence of your Holy Spirit. We pray, Lord, your blessings upon each and every one of us who have come to serve and to worship, to pour out our praise upon who you are. We ask, God, that you would allow your Spirit to guide us and rest upon us, keep us, and show us the way that we should go. We need you, Father, during our times of trial and tribulation. We need you, Father, when we are facing grave dangers and difficult times in our lives. We need you, Father, in our darkest hour. And we seek your touch in our time of need. We ask you, God, to move upon our hearts. Deliver us, O oh God, from our own wicked ways. Open up our hearts to you, that your love may become our love. That we may be able to forgive as you have forgiven us. We will be able to walk in the protection of your guidance. We will be able to look upon others not with an evil heart, but with forgiveness and love. We ask you, Lord, to protect all of your children with your divine hand. We need your inspiration. We need your strength. We need your keeping power. So we come before you now, Father, asking, Lord, that you would touch us in a way that will allow us to bring glory to your name. We recognize we have not always done all that you have assigned us to do. We have yielded to temptation along the way. So we ask you, Father, to inspire our hearts that we might move away from that which the wickedness of the world is calling us to do we would come to you, Father, for all things. We humbly ask these blessings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Let the saints of God say amen. 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 I just thank you so much. You can, you can go ahead and take your seats. Uh, Acts 5, 1 through 10. I, I want to talk to you today uh, from the thought, don't let the devil rise. Um, you know, I know new school folk don't, don't know this text, but, uh, but us old schoolers, we, we remember a time when um, that was a very popular song in the church. You know, song said, don't let the devil rise. Because if you let him rise, He'll want to drive. 
And, and, and I found that to be a truism in my life. That, 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 that there, are some, there are some folk you can play around with. You know. But the devil ain't one of them. So, I don't care how long you've been saved. I don't care how sanctified you are. I don't care how much you know the Bible. I don't care how many scriptures you can quote. I don't care what kind of prayer life you got. The devil been there, done that, and got three from t shirts to prove. Like him. Like him. That's the truth. Right there. Let me tell you something right there. The devil knows you better than you know yourself. He's been around a long time. The devil knew your mom. Come on. The devil knew your dad. Matter of fact, some of us are here because the devil knew our dad. Yeah. I want you to think about this thing. If, if, if Satan could convince one third of the angels to leave heaven and follow him, you know he can fix your mind. If he could convince Eve to disobey God yes, in the Garden of Eden, you know he can mess with you. That's right. If he could convince Cain to kill his own brother, uh, devil ain't nothing to play with. I I'm saying this because oftentimes we'll get tempted by Lucifer. Not that you want to, but because it's tempting sometimes. Just to be on the edge of goodness. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. You, you know evil is right there. And you just say, if I can stay right here, I can at least look over at it. <laughs> you, 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 uh, but you'll mess around and not just look. Before you know it, you'll be done speed over it. You'll be done tasting it. Touching. Before you know it, it'll have you wrapped all in. And, and, and I point this out because if you do slide, it don't mean that you're not saved. It don't mean that you're not got, you still don't have God's protective hedge. But what it means is you might miss out on some stuff that God would have had for you. Because here's what we know, God don't bless ugly. Uh, just like you as a parent, you don't bless ugly, do you? No, no, if your child doing the right thing, Christmas going to be a time of joy. But if your child acting like a fool, Christmas ain't going to be so pleasant, is it? No, okay, all right, you with me so far? And, 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 and so this text helps us to kind of get an appreciation for that concept, that the devil ain't nothing to play with, and so you need to stay as far away from temptation as you can. Because some of y'all can witness to this. If you can witness, don't raise your hand. But, but, but you know, just say amen and they won't know because you got your mask on, they won't know the truth. <laughs> some, of, some, of, some of us can witness, right? That, yeah, that's right. You didn't mess around, got caught up a time or two. Yeah. And mess around, and then you realize, hey, I won't plan on doing that. But that's why Paul said, what I would do, uh, that I would not do. Right. And what I would not do, that I do. He said, therefore, I found out that what I would do good. Evil is always around, pushing me to do bad. Uh, all right, all right. So, so here we go, here we go. Now, what I want you to do, though, is as I go through this text, I want you to go home. I want you to go back and read chapter 4, and I want you to look at verses 33 through 37, because you need that as the intro to chapter 5, all right? So chapter 4, verses 33 through 37, that's intro to chapter 5, all right? Now, here's what's going on. The Bible tells us that during this particular point in time, as you know, Jesus has already gone back up to heaven. And the apostles, now they are coming together. They have gathered together. The Holy Spirit has given them a pouring out of anointing. And they have been given direction by the Spirit on what they should do, where they should go, and how they should spread the word of God. And so in doing that, they make a decision, all of them, the apostles make a decision. And that decision is to leave their occupations and go forth and do what God tells them to do. 
So those who were fishermen stopped fishing. Those who were carpenters stopped carpentering. Those who were plumbers stopped plumbing. And those who were working for the public interest, uh, 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 they stopped doing what they were doing. So their incomes dried up. And so what they agreed to do was to take all that they had and sell it and bring it and have a common treasurer. And in that common treasury, everyone could get what they needed. So nobody would go without. And it happened to be one disciple, one disciple whose name was Barnabas. Barnabas was a Levite. And so as a Levite, he had great wealth. Because during those times, not like in these times, the folks supported the preachers. <laughs> So they were the richest folk in town. And so Barnabas had great wealth. And Barnabas took, had, great, had, had amassed property. And he sold all of his property. And he took all of the proceeds. And he brought it. And he placed it at the apostles' feet. And he says, I'm going to put this in the common treasury. So that while you're out there preaching the word of God, you'll be taken care of. Isn't that a wonderful thing? When you're willing to recognize that all that you have, is because of the goodness of God. And so you say to yourself, if God gave it to me, I'm willing to give it back. Amen. Now, so that's what Barnabas did. And there was another disciple by the name of Ananias. Ananias was a saved man. He was sanctified. He was filled with the Holy Ghost. But he had a weakness. Don't you know the devil knows all about you? The devil knows your strengths. And the devil knows your weaknesses. Yeah, yeah. And Ananias' a weakness was he loved praise. Mm -hmm. And you may think that's a small thing, but let me tell you something. Flattery mm -hmm. can get the best of you. Mm -hmm. You got to be careful how you let other folk tell you about you. Okay. Because you know who you are. Yeah. 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 Right? So when folk call you cute and you know you ugly, don't listen to them. <laughs> Because they, you know, you know, I ain't talking about you, man. You are cute, but you know, you know, you know they're trying to get something out of you. You look in the mirror, you know what you look like. So you have to be careful about for what flattering you. But 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 Ananias, he liked flattery. You know, he, he to him his worth was in how what other people said about him. So he liked flattery. So when he saw that they were praising Barnabas for his gift, Ananias said, "I want some of that praise too." So he decides. And what he's going to do is he's going to sell a piece of land. And he talks to his wife about it. And they, he said, listen, we're going to sell some land and we're going, to, we're going to put our offering down there. Because if we put our offering down there and it's a nice offering, then we're going to get some of that praise like Barnabas got. All right? And so he goes out and, he, and she agrees with him and they sell the land. But the price of land has gone up. And so what they thought they was going to get, they get more. And when they get all this money, and they look at it, and they say, wait a minute. Now, when we thought it was going to be a little bit, it was hard to give. But now it's a lot. We can't give all this money to the church. And so they say, listen, let's, 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 let them agree. We're going we're gonna to go and tell the apostles that we only sold, sold it for such and such. Mm -hmm. We're going to take the rest of it, and we're going to keep it for ourselves. Ain't that how funny we are? Yeah. How God will bless you with a lot. Yeah. You praying for it. Yeah. God will give it to you. Yeah. And then you forget God gave it to you. Yeah. Yeah. I remember, I remember, do y'all mind if, if I do take my time. Is that going to do that? Listen, if you want me to speed up, just holler amen two or three times. I know to move faster, okay? I remember when I first became the pastor of Enoch Baptist Church. And there was a young girl that was in college. 
and she was at Bible study, and she used to come every, if she was here today, don't get mad, I'm telling you a story. If you don't bark, they won't know it's you, okay? She, she came to Bible study every Wednesday night, she came to church, and she, beautiful young girl, she really was beautiful, really was cute, beautiful young girl, and so she said, Pastor, if I tithe, will God bless me? I said, yes, it will. And so she began to tithe, and she was given tithe because at the time she worked in part time, right? Then she graduated from college. And when she came from college, she got a job as a school teacher. And by then, we moved to this building right here. And she came in one day, she said, Pastor Dan, you know what? When I'm working part time, them times are easy to get. Come on, preacher. <laughs> Talk to <laughs> <high>, preacher. <laughs> now I'm a teacher. Yeah. That's a lot of money. <laughs> Y'all really need that much money to run that church? <laughs> <laughs> I said, baby, the money ain't for me. At the time, I was still working. I said, I work every day. But listen, what you don't understand is this. Whatever you give to God, God will give it back to you too. They decide, and now and and the family, and wife decide, listen, this is too much to give. So they decide, we're going to hold something back. And so Ananias, he takes the smaller portion of the money, and he goes to where the apostles have gathered. And when he gets there, he lays his offering down at the apostles. He's proud, too. He walk in with, a, with his chest poked out, with his head held high, because he's proud to get that money. You know, he walk in and he drop it down like, you know, I'm somebody. You know how we do with all the time. You know how folk do. Uh, see, when they give me a dollar, they just kind of ball up with them. Or when they give me a hundred dollars, they walk all the way up and say, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> then they raise their hand. Pastor, I just want to let you know that I like. <laughs> So he walks in proud. He walks in proud, chest poked out. And everything, and he does it publicly. He walks out and he lays the offering at the feet of Peter. Uh -huh. And Peter just said to him, and now that's a beautiful thing. And I, I'm taking a gospel liberty here, right? Because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm putting it in modern day context. Peter says, it's a beautiful thing that you were coming in. And I said, we sold some property. And all that we received from the property, we want you to have for the good of the work of the Lord. And he's expecting everybody to stand up and go, look at, look at Ananias. <laughs> Doing his thing. That's Ananias. God, thank you for Ananias. But he doesn't get that. In fact, Peter looks at him and Peter rebukes him. And Peter says to him, why would you try to lie about your offering? Why are you trying to get the praise from man? And not the praise from God. So he said to him, he said, listen, before you sold the land, it was yours. Nobody told you you had to sell the land to give money. It was yours. So you had to do with what you wanted to do. He says, now that you sold the land, the money you got from selling the land, it was yours. So you still had an opportunity to do with it what you wanted to do. You didn't have to give it all. You could have just told me, hey, listen, I'm not going to give you all of it. I'm just going to tithe it. Or I'm just going to give you 25% of it. But you come in here. You come in here lying. Right. Let me tell you something so you understand where I'm coming from. Don't you know that the Holy Ghost knows everything? Yeah. Yeah. And that the Holy Ghost reveals stuff to his anointing? Y'all yeah. yeah. saying, yeah, but y'all don't believe it. Yeah. Let me tell you why. Because y'all tell me anything. <laughs> and think I believe it. Just because I don't say I know better. Let me tell you something. Every, every, you know, old folks say this. Every closed eye ain't sleeping. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Every goodbye ain't gone. Yeah. Every pimp knows yeah. a prostitute. Yeah. And every pastor knows a pimp. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
That plain enough. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. You don't need to know which one of them I've been, but you know which one I am right now. Yeah. 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 So Peter rebukes him. Peter rebukes him. And at, 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 at the conclusion of the rebuke, Ananias drops right there at the feet of Peter. And Luke says he gave up the ghost, meaning what? He died right there. He died right there. Now, now, Peter didn't pronounce the death, but the Holy Ghost did. Because you got to be careful how you mess with the Holy Ghost. Now, 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 time goes by. And, and Peter, Peter says to the young men, say, listen, I want you all to get Ananias, wrap him up, and take him and bury him. And as they are gone to bury him, as they're out there taking care of Ananias, his wife is at home, Sapphira. She's at home, and she's thinking to herself, oh, where's my husband at? He's been gone a long time. He was supposed to go and get that money, and then we're going to come back and take the rest of this money, and I'm going to be going shopping. <laughs> and that's a gospel liberty, okay? That ain't any Bible. That's a gospel liberty, all right? I'm just putting myself in her shoes. Then what? You got some extra money. You know what you're going to do with it. Ain't nobody sitting at home hurrying no money. Where you going? I'm going to hit the store shop. I'm going to buy something. Right? You just sold some land at a night. That's right. We're going out tonight. Yeah. Right? We got to look good. All right. So she begins, she gets worried. Because time has passed and he hadn't come back home. So she gets up, oh, this is in the Bible now. She gets up and she goes to where the apostles are gathered. Yeah. And she walks in there and she says, and, 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 and she says, she says to Peter, Where is my husband? And she's expecting Peter to tell her where Ananias is. Have you seen him? He was supposed to come and give you all this money. But rather than Peter answering her about where he is, he says to her, Let me ask you a question. How much money did you all sell the land for? And how much were you all planning to give to the church? And she tells the same lie that her husband told her. Oh, she had two opportunities to make it right. The first opportunity was when her husband came to her and said, this is the stuff that I'm getting ready to do. Right. She should have said, wait a minute, honey. Ladies, I'm trying to help you out right now. She should have said, wait a minute, honey. You know you married me for my wisdom and not for my good looks. And I'm telling you, y'all ain't like that part Okay, I'll change it up. You know you married me for my good looks and my wisdom, y'all. And, and, and that's what he should, she should have said to him that, and she should have said what? Don't lie. That's it, that's it. Don't lie to the man of God. But no, she went right along with the program. And then she gets a second opportunity to do the right thing. When God gives you a second chance to do the right thing, do the right thing. Because you might not get the third chance. That's right. So he says to her, how much? And she tells him the same lie. When she lies, Peter says to her, you hear the footsteps outside the door? That those are the same young men that just buried your husband. And since you lied, not to me, but to God, those same feet are going to bury you. And the Bible says at that moment the Holy Spirit came and snatched the breath right out of her body. She dropped dead right then and there. And they wrapped her up and they took her away. And there are several lessons to be learned from this thing. There's some folks that talk about whether or not you should always tithe, like where you said you were going to tithe. That's not where I'm coming from today. There are some folks that talk about the power of the Holy Spirit, and Lord knows he's powerful, but that's not where I'm coming from today. 
where I'm coming from is how you can't let the devil tip your behind. You know? yeah. and see, what, remember what Peter, what Peter said to, to, to Ananias was, why have you allowed Satan to get in your heart? Here you were saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost on the right track, doing the right thing, but you let Satan get in your mind and tell you some stuff that you knew you should not have done. Uh, and I'm not telling you that Ananias and Sapphira didn't get to heaven. I don't know if they got there or not. I believe they did because they were saved. I believe they did. But let me tell you something. Just because you get to heaven don't mean you want to go through hell on earth. That's right. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. If I got to go through hell to get to heaven, now I'll do it in ten times. Because my ultimate goal is to get to heaven. Amen. But the bottom line still is what I'm trying to tell you. You've got to be careful about dealing with the devil. You've got to be careful about letting the devil ride. Don't let him in the front seat. Don't let him in the back seat. Okay? If you see him coming to ride, keep the right on driving. Because if you get in, you don't want to drive, he's going to want to take over. So then how do I, how do I combat, how do I insulate myself? Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all have messed up your whole life, messing around that the devil get in your car. Huh? Because you let your eyes. You let your eyes put you into something that you couldn't get your behind out of. You know what we say in the old time, don't write a check that your butt can't cash. You gotta, you, 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 you limit the oh, listen. Yeah. 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 Let me get there right quick, all right. Here we go, so listen. So then what do I do then? How then do I insulate myself? How do I fix it up so that, you know what? I or the devil control my mind and my thoughts. Okay, here's the deal. No, point number one, let every act, let every act of service be done for the glory of God and not for the praise of man. That's true. That's true. See, Ananias' problem was, Ananias' problem was this, is that he wanted men to tell him how great he was. And the devil knew that. And just like the devil knew that about him, the devil knows that about each and every one of us. And I know you're sitting there saying, but that ain't me. Don't lie to yourself. Yes, it is. All of us like the praise of mankind. But all of us need to stop. That's right. Okay? Because when you're dealing with working for the Lord, it ain't about getting a pat on the back. It's not about other folks saying you did a good job. Because what you do in the dark, believe you me, God will bless you in, 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 in the light. So what you want to do is let, 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 let your works, let your works not give you the glory, but let your works give God the glory. Huh? Don't do it for mankind, but do it for the Lord, all right? If you want to sing on the choir, don't worry about being the primary singer. Don't worry about being the lead on the choir. Worry about just giving God everything you got. If you just don't be an alto, don't even worry about who's sitting in the congregation. Just open up your mouth and look up to the Lord and just sing for the glory of God. Sing because God has blessed you and because he has taken care of you. Don't with me so far. And now his second mistake was he went to his wife for advice. I'm not telling you going to your wife is a mistake. I'm saying him going to his wife was a mistake. And what made it a mistake was this. He went to somebody that he knew would agree with him. Uh, Only seek advice and insight from those whose eyes are on the prize of the glory of the God that you serve. Because folk will give you advice not based on what's good for you, but what's based on what's good for them. They'll put their own selfish desires in the midst of things, and they will have you going cuckoo for cocoa pop, and you won't even understand why you did something so outlandish. Let me tell you something. You want people in your life you want a good friend in your life that will speak truth to power. You want folk that will tell you the truth and not just what you want to hear. That's why 
the Bible says that the beginning of all wisdom is the fear of the Lord. You want to only get stuff from folk that fear God. That know that, if, that God woke me up this morning. That God is the reason why I am here. And for God I live. And for God I die. And therefore, when I tell you something, it ain't going to be my opinion. It's going to be what thus saith the Lord. A good friend will never have you making a promise that goes against what you promised God. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I don't call them friends. See, I need folk in my life that won't help me bust hell wide open. I need folk in my life that'll say, stop. You try to get me to cross over now. Stop. I know you might want to go there, but that ain't good for you to go there. Because God sees everything you do. God knows everywhere you are. You need to represent God. I don't care where you are, Pastor Zayla. And right now, you looking like you don't know Jesus. You need to back up. I need folks that'll be honest with me about what I'm getting ready to do. I don't need folks to help me do wrong. I can do wrong all by myself. I need you to help me stay on the right place. I need you to help me get the glory. I need you to help live my life so when other folks see me, they look up to Jesus and say, what a mighty God. Lastly, let your yay be yay and your nay be nay. In other words, be real. See, Ananias' fault was he, he didn't want to be real. He wanted to put he wanted to put forth put forth a false front for folk to think one way when he was the other way. Uh, I, don't, I don't know why folk want to be phony. I don't know why, what, I don't know what made folk we, for, for, for think we don't see you. We know you. We see the real you. You can put on anything you want to put on. We still know who you are. You can put your mask on. We know who you are. You can get some new hair and we know who you are. You can get some new eyelashes and we still know who you are. You can get fake back. You can get fake front. You can get fake muscles. We still know who you are. Because you can't hide who you are for so long. Elijah is going to lie after a while. They don't need to put no no front. I don't know why folks want to put on the front about how holy they are. Ain't nobody got time to play. This stuff is for real. Second, why I don't mind telling folks I'm not perfect? Because I'm not trying to be phony with my stuff. That's why I don't mind telling folks. But yeah, every now and again. You gon' go to the funny bone. You gon' keep Dr. Daniel sitting on the front row. And he gon' be laughing out loud. And he might even just around and say a word that you didn't know he had in his vocabulary. Yeah. <laughs>
And because he knows you, he will use everything in his arsenal to get you to look away from where you know Jesus wants you to be. He knows your weaknesses. He knows your strengths. He knows the folk around you. He brought this on the church. He know them folk too. He know your wife. He know your husband. He know your children. He know which one of them that he can use against you to cause you to get out of character. He knows all this stuff. And if you don't, if you ain't careful, you'll let him get in your head. And the very thing that you said that you didn't like, he'll let the one closest to you do just that. Lift it all up. So in the words of the old songwriter, don't let him ride. Because if you let him ride, he going to want to drive. Keep it real. Keep it all real. Don't worry about the praise of man. Live your life for the praise of God. Don't go to other folks for God the problem. Go to God. You don't know what they got on their mind. Let the Lord lead you. That's it. You don't need nobody to aim me in your wrong. They said you was okay. Let the Lord lead you. Let your yay be yay and your nay be See, the problem was hypocrisy. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, about, I'm about done, so I, I know and, 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 and I'm about done. The problem was hypocrisy. Now, here's the thing. We ought to be thankful Amen. that the Holy Spirit is leading us. Yes. 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 Oh, thank you. Because there's a lot of hypocrisy in the churches today. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. There's a lot of folks acting like they're something that they are not. Come on, man. And that's what makes other folks not want to be in church. Yeah. 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 That's true. That's true. Yeah. But if everybody is real about their stuff, if everybody is real, if everybody, if everybody will acknowledge and let people know, you know what, hey, listen, there's some things I'm still working on. I'm just trying to get rid of them one by one, day by day. I gave up cheating. I'm, this is I'm, this is. I'm using this as an example, all right. You can tell I gave up cheating a year ago. If it's true, it only if it's true. I gave up stealing two years ago. Only if it's true. I'm still working on my lines. That's gonna be a hard one right there. Be honest with people. And 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 let me tell you something. Your honesty will get other folk to accept Christ. Come on. The next people drop Christ like the field in your life, even in your imperfection. Right. It'll help them see Jesus the way Jesus wants to be seen, and He will get the glory out of your life. Amen. When people see that Jesus could take you in, <laughs> how you were, and what you used to be like, when they can see what you were, and that God still loves you, in spite of. People just want you to be real. The Holy Ghost just wants you to be real. Uh, if you're here today, if you're here today, listen, if you're here today, Come on, choir, give us some music. Yeah. See, if you don't, I'll be keeping on preaching. I'm going to tell you, he should have said a long time ago. Oh, I can tell you, help me, help me, let me close out. Preach. That's good. Give me a good preach. Listen. Listen. If you're here today, and, and if you have, if you have any concern about giving your life to Christ because of your imperfections. I want you to know that the imperfection ain't the problem. 
It actually is why you need him in your life. And Jesus accepts us in our imperfections. That's the beauty of who he is. He accepts us just like we are. All he wants you to do is acknowledge that he is Lord. And that he is your Savior. So if you're here today, if you have not received Christ as your Savior, I want to invite you to come down to the altar at this time. If you're here today, if for any reason you have, you have not yielded to Christ, I want to invite you to come down. I, you, you never want to come to church and not get what you came to church for, which is a closer walk with the master. So if you're here today, if you have not received Christ as your personal Savior, I want to invite you to come on down right there and get to know him as your personal Savior. If you're here today, if you know Christ, but you don't have a church home, and you have been looking for a church home that believes in an unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ, then I invite you to come down as well and unite with us. So if either one of those two gets where you are today, I invite you to come down right now. If you don't know what you're looking for, church home. For any reason, or if you, look, if you just need Christ in your life, come on down right now. If you haven't received Christ, come on down. If you're not a church home, come on down. Come on down. Any, anybody else? Anybody else? Anyone else? All right. We're going to pray right now. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're going to pray right now. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we come before you on this day. We thank you, Father, for the increase. We thank you, Father, for the word that you've allowed to come out on today. And I'm praying, Father, you would place your hedge around this your child. Lord, put your hedge around your child. Touch in the mighty. Let your Holy Spirit fall fresh. Let the anointing fall fresh right now. God, provide strength, provide wisdom, understanding, and love. We thank you for this increase in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. We claim victory. Let the saints of God say amen. Amen. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. I need you to go and give me right here. If you have any personal items, take them with you, all right? This I'll get you in our church room, okay? Thank you so much. The Bible says, "Y'all keep it. You keep the same thing going, right there. Let me change it up. Because this is about the same thing. Hey, amen. This is about about surrendering. Glory. The Bible says that on that occasion, that Jesus took bread, he he blessed it, he broke it." He gave to his disciples and said, take, this is my body, which is broken for you. Let's all eat this bread together. Thank you, Jesus. Then he took the cup. After he had given thanks, he said, take, drink the all of it. For this cup represents my blood. Shared for many for the remission of sin. Let's all drink this cup together. Amen. Then they sang the hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you today. We praise your name, Lord, for who you are. For all the gifts, for blessings you shower down upon us, for your mercy and for your grace. As we leave this building, Father, we ask you, God, to anoint and watch over each of us. Keep us in your divine will. Also, pray, Father, that you will bless the offerings that are about to be received. Lord, touch each giver. Bless each gift. Give us the wisdom that we may apply these things to continue kingdom building, that it might be here on earth as it is in heaven. We thank you, Father, for all these blessings. Now may God's grace and the sweet need of his Holy Spirit rest in and abound now and forth and forevermore. Amen. Amen.
The ushers are going to be escorting you out row by row. If you will, please wait until the ushers get to your row before you depart. There will be some receptacles at the door for you to drop your containers in as you uh, drop your ties off and the office. God bless you. May heaven continue to smile upon you. All right, choir, go ahead, Christ.